All right, we're going to continue here with our introduction to voting. Uh, and here is where we're actually going to count votes and figure out who wins. Uh, and we're going to do that using uh, a few different methods. Um, we're going to focus kind of on the plurality method. Then we'll talk about uh, a majority winner and then uh, a new one that you probably never heard of, and that is Condorcet. Okay, so here we go. The objectives after these few videos, you should be able to interpret a preference schedule for an election using the majority criterion, which means figure out who is the winner using the majority criterion. Then I want you to be able to uh, determine who's the winner using the Condorcet. That's how you say that word, Condorcet criterion. So here we go. We'll jump right in. Uh, we're also going to do a plurality uh, method. And plurality is the one that you guys are most familiar with. Uh, the most commonly used method uh, is the plurality method. And the definition, plurality method, simply an election of first place votes. Okay, The plurality candidate, which means the winner of a plurality election, is simply the candidate that has the most first place votes. So let's take a look here. We're going to go back to our preference schedule for the Math Appreciation Society we used in a uh, previous lesson. Uh, I have it all filled in here for us, right? Remember, uh, we had the total number of voters and how each voter filled out their ballot. There it is. Uh, and the first thing we want to figure out is who here is the plurality candidate. So we're looking for the candidate with the most first place votes. Well, first, we know we have candidate A, candidate B, candidate C, candidate D, right? And we want to figure out how many first place votes each of these candidates had. So all I really have to do here is just focus on this very top row of first place votes. That's all I'm doing. I'm just looking at the first place votes, okay, to figure out who's going to win. Candidate A, how many first place votes do they have? Well, candidate A is in first place here, and they have 14 of those first place votes. They are not in first place anywhere else, so candidate A has 14 first place votes. Candidate B, Let's figure out how many first place votes candidate B has. Candidate B is over here. And notice candidate B has four first place votes. They don't have any other uh, ballot where they're listed first. So candidate B has a total of four first place votes. Candidate C. This one's a little bit tricky because I see candidate C is in first place here. I also see candidate C in first place over here. So notice candidate C is in first place for a total of 10, or I'm sorry, 10 plus 1, 11 total times. So candidate C has 11 first place votes. And then last but not least, we will go to candidate D. Candidate D, I see right in the middle, has 8 total first place votes. So who is the winner of this election? Very simply, A is the winner using plurality. Okay, so candidate A is the plurality winner. And that's really all there is to the plurality method.